Hey, what's up guys? Mendel here. Hope you're all doing awesome and wonderful. And I have a special guest here called Britta Kurtz. Am I saying it correct like that? Uh, hi, Mendel. Mendel, yes. Um, it's uh, Britta Gertz with a G in like G and not a K, but yeah, you're fine with that. that. that it's, it's the typical German G, it's, as always. Yes, it's a typical German G. <laughs> of course. Okay, so the most important thing. So you have a new... Uh, vocal course out and it's called Screaming Vocals Mastery, mm -hmm. correct? At Promix Academy. There's a link in the description box below and normally I would say uh, you should check it out but now I would say you must check it out because I watched it today and Jesus Christ, do you have a lot of knowledge about screaming and that kind of stuff? Like, when, and when I watched it, like, I was like, because I'm a producer, I record bands and stuff like that and I was like, man, if I wish half of this stuff beforehand that would make my life much easier. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear you like the course. Oh, that was no, no problem at all. So you also play, I did my research, So, but correct me if I'm wrong, you're in two bands, Critical Mess and High Race? Mm -hmm. High Race? Yes, High Race. Also, I'll put all the links and the good stuff in the description box below. And there was a song called The New Devil, but I couldn't find it yet. From which band is that? Um, it's a song that uh, Christian Kohle from the um, uh, Kohle Keller studio and I did together um, solely for the purpose of putting it um, as an add-on to the course. So okay. you see me like uh, on a playthrough and you have all the files so that you have the backing track and you can just try out your own vocals um, with it. So it's specifically uh, written for that vocal course. Oh, come on, God, that's, that's awesome. So I, I really like that song. The chorus is catchy as hell. So if you want to hear that song, make sure you check out the course. I, I watched the course and it's so in-depth. You even have like vocal diagrams, I remember. And there is an, a, a great quote, uh, in, in my opinion, it was a great quote. In the course, you say, think of breath as fuel for your voice. Now, that's pure poetry, in my opinion. So my first question is, you're so knowledgeable about all these vocal cords, how you should, like, when recording, um, stretch and all kinds of, and your breathing techniques. Where does all that knowledge come from? That's where I'm very curious about. Uh, the knowledge comes, like, I mean, I'm doing these kind of vocals in my metal bands like for I think 18 or 19 years now okay, okay. Uh, some somewhere along the line of that so um, it's just it's a natural thing for me like in the beginning when I started there were no YouTube tutorials there was like nothing um, like a teacher for that kind of stuff so what could you do like you grab the microphone and you just uh, yelled it out and tried it out in the rehearsal room and I think I probably made every possible mistake that you can make as a vocalist and especially okay. as a harsh, harsh vocalist and so like again knowledge here and there put all the puzzle pieces together and yeah this is what I ended up with after like 20 years but I tell you what before I started teaching vocals, I didn't know I had this kind of knowledge. Like, I, I didn't know that I knew so much. Only when you speak to people who have no idea of how to growl and scream, you find out that you gathered so much knowledge. This is true. I, I, I agree because I had, I remember when sometimes, like back when I was in the, in the band called Aborted, when people come after me on the show and they say like, how do you do this thing? And I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I have no idea how, what is, like, was it the same for you? Or was it, is it, was it for you like people started asking you questions and then you're like, okay, I have to think about how I actually do this? Or did you already know how you were doing certain things? Uh, I think it was like 50-50 um, or, or more like 30-70 because uh, every problem that I have encountered myself um, before I was asked by a student, of course, I could explain well. Um, but then there were so many questions like, how do you do that? How do you do that? So I started to reverse engineer what, I'm, what I was doing. And I also started to take little videos here and there when I was recording. What am I actually doing? What, what is my posture? What is my tongue position for this specific sound? And um, I learned so much only through the questions of my students. So it's, uh, it's, I, have, I always say I have the best possible <laughs> job that you can have. I scream at people and they scream bad and it's back <laughs> and everyone's happy. <laughs> So, so, so basically we could say it's a result of reverse German engineering, basically. Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> you guys are so clever. For those who don't know, like, so I'm from the Netherlands and we always think like, okay, the Germans are the smartest people in the whole wide world and like so dedicated to innovation. It's insane. I'm not even surprised. So I have a fun question here for you. What's the best German beer? Oh, 
um, you're probably asking the wrong person. Like I, I, I have a, I really love beer, but I have a narrow corridor of what I like. So um, I'm, <laughs> I'm a big fan of like Pilsner beer. So very plain beer, beer, like I call it. Um, so we have a brewery here in Hanover called Herrenhäusen, Herrenhäusen okay. Pils, and um, uh, that's what we drink here. It's like we call it Harry, and um, it's um, the go-to brand that we have here. So I'm I'm really happy with a plain uh, Pilsner, and I'm not so much a fan of very, you know, like sweet dark beers. That's um, I, I can oh, okay. I can drink a glass of that, and I enjoy that. But like for like a long party night or something, I would pick something like more on the lighter colored side. So next time when, I, when I'm in Germany, I should try that beer. Is it Pilsner? What's it called again? Uh, Herrenhäusner. Harry. Just say Harry. Harry. Yeah. <laughs> Harry. It's funny because in Dutch, Harry means noise. Oh, that's, that's a good name, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go, there you go. So the second question I have here, what's the best female screamer at the moment? Or your favorite female screamer? Oh, that is so difficult um, to tell you because like there, there are so many. Like back when in the days when I started, there were like a handful that I have known of, and now there are um, uh, so many, which is awesome. It's really awesome, indeed, indeed. I yeah. agree. Um, so um, my favorite um, female harsh vocalist that I listen to at the moment um, uh, the most uh, is uh, Megan Target from the band Vexed. I don't know if you if you heard them. Um, I'm really in love with the band's songs and her vocals are just the perfect fit and she just nails her technique. Like, she's a really, really good singer. Okay, holy shit. Now, okay, I'll check that out. I'm very curious about this. So the second question I have here. What's the worst food for your voice? <laughs> That's, I mean, since we are swallowing into our stomach and not through our windpipe, that's a difficult question. Um, I would say on the long run, like like unhealthy food, like everything that, that messes with your body a lot is also damaging um, for your voice. But I would say um, maybe food that has a lot of acid um, because like just like throughout your whole body, your, your, your body will, will be like probably high on acid. Um, so I don't know, but I really don't pay any attention of what I eat before a show or something like that. So like I've, I've heard like that some people don't like to drink milk. So when, when I'm in the mood for a glass of milk before a show, I drink milk. Um, yeah, but I mean, for my voice, probably the worst thing would be pineapple just simply because of the fact that I find it super disgusting. <laughs> oh my God, okay, okay. I hate pineapples. <laughs> Sorry, How pineapple. can you hate? If you would say I hate pineapple on pizza, I would agree. But pineapple, you, why do you hate it? I don't know. Like it looks so good and it looks delicious, but whenever I try it, like I find it just like disgusting. It's just okay. the taste of it. Like I don't, I, I don't have anything, any personal issues with pineapples. It's just that I don't like the taste at you're all. You're the. F I think you're the first person in the world that I've heard say I hate pineapple. <laughs> I, 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 but I have the same thing with coconut. Like I can't, can't handle coconut. Like I just. Don't like it, and then people around me just like keep eating it. All yeah, time. So, send them yeah. over if you don't like it. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so now I'm curious, what's the best male screamer at the moment, in your opinion, or in general? Mm, um, I am so in awe with Will Ramos' um, vocals, um, like the uh, current singer in Lorna Shore. Like what he does is, um, I don't know, and it's a compliment. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's so filthy. It's so filthy. It's, it's, it's juicy. It's, it's, I don't know, his range is incredible. His vocal control is incredible. And also his artistry with it, like how he, how he puts it together. I don't know, like it, it, it both feels very natural and not kind of like, um, um, unnaturally stagged, if you know what I mean. Like it, it feels like it comes from his, from his guts more from than from his brains you know like it comes just okay. natural to him and he's a beast of a vocalist like really and i listen to that a lot in the gym so whenever like there's these really slow slam parts and i have my barbell on my shoulder yep. I'm like, <laughs> 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 i have the same thing when i when i went to the gym and did squats i just put on slayer and i could like add 20 more kilograms to to my body <laughs> Because you get so pumped. It's so funny, like whenever I take my headphones out and then I'm in, I'm in the gym and then you hear that typical gym. Yeah, yeah, the, it's just the, the, like pop, the poppy stuff. World. <laughs> yeah. So 
Talking about favorite vocals, I'm a bit curious about your background. What inspired you to scream? And then also, who inspired you to scream? Like, who were your inspirations and that kind of stuff? I get this question a lot and I can't really answer that because um, from, I mean, first of all, like, I'm lucky with my parents because they never told me to shut up. They never okay. told me to be, like, quiet. Um, so I, I wasn't particular, particularly, like, um, like a, like a, like a whirlwind when I was a little kid, but I was a noisy kid as far as like, I liked making noises with my mouth. So um, before I could even like read and I was looking at my comic books, I tried to like, you know, make all the little noises that were in these speech bubbles when, when, there's, a, when there's a fight or something and then they come okay. with, these, with these symbols. Um, I, was, I was trying to, to mimic the sounds and stuff like that. So I always knew that I, that I had um, like a kind of like, um, I was drawn towards making noises, some kind of like icky noises with my with my mouth and throat. And um, then when it came that I was looking for a band as a vocalist, when I really actively started uh, looking, I wasn't even particularly looking for a metal band that was looking for harsh vocals. I was just simply looking for people where I would feel that the chemistry would work out. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't really have any band experience um, or a lot of band experience before that, especially as a singer. So um, when I when I met um, two guitarists, which would later form Cripper with me, um, it, it was a natural thing. I just grabbed the microphone and I yelled and I screamed and I could make all these noises. I couldn't do them consistently and in a healthy way just right from the start, but that's that's what sparked it. I, I was I was. I just felt like it was the right energy and the right thing for me to do at the time. And then later, when I, you know, when I, um, when when we were playing the first festivals, later I found out that um, I'm one of the few girls who would do that. Like I, it didn't even occur to me to look: are all these singers male singers or female singers? Like I don't know. I didn't. I was probably naive, or I don't. I don't know what. But um, I didn't really have any particular. Um, um, uh, idols when it came to that but there's one person on this world um, that has inspired me to do something creative with uh, my voice and this is Mike Patton because um, what he can do like the range that he spans and the technique that he can cover with his um, voice is just I don't know it's a uh, it's something else uh, he, especially since he's using his voice in so many different ways Mm -hmm. uh, and not just in like one band or two bands or one style. Like it's, it's, he spans so much, so many genres. I'm really impressed um, uh, to this day with what he's doing. Yeah, he's just, he's unique, I would say. Yeah. Say easily one of a kind. Yes, I would say so, yeah. yeah. You teach to a lot of people around the globe. Is there a common issue you see among students, like when they start out? Mm. There are a few. I would say that for people who have no idea of how to um, produce these vocals or have, have no prior knowledge to singing in general, um, they try to form the sounds um, in their throat. While um, I'm looking at it this way, like your, your primary source of tone is here in your vocal box, in your larynx, of course. But everything that you do um, in your mouth and with your tongue and with your lip position and everything else in it. Um, this is where you decide which kind of equalizer position you want to give to the tone. So do you want the low parts inside the tone to come forward? Do you want um, uh, the overtones to peak out and to end up in a pick squeal? So this is everything that you decide above your larynx. And um, I've, I see many people who try to really um, put a lot of like stress into this area and um, it gets tense and then uh, hoarseness is uh, very often happening for those people. And also um, the whole breathing thing, like for some people it comes very naturally to have a, a breathing that enables you to become a good singer. But for some people it's really uh, difficult because they have the feeling that they need to force their air out by, um, by going into like an, in a sit up like position, which is like the opposite, um, because like I don't know if you if you have ever observed an opera singer um, delivering like a really long note, 
Like you will not find any of those operatic singers like being all hunched over at the end of their tone. They're all like big and large. And this is really something um, like the breathing technique um, I learned from observing that and diving into the technique how opera singers do that. So I'm, I'm not a vocalist, but as with um, like guitars, you have like guitar trends, like we went from six string to seven string to eight string to nine string to 18,000 strings. There are probably also uh, trends that I don't hear as a guitar player, uh, uh, like on the vocals. Do you notice a trend, like for example, um, I remember in 2007 when Job for, for a Cowboy came in and they introduced some pig squeals, like almost every band started doing pig squeals. So is there something now going on that you're like, okay, that's currently the most trendy thing? Um, yeah, for sure. Um... Back in the days when I started, um, there was more or less like false chord singing was the go-to technique for harsh vocals. And mm -hmm. nowadays, um, the fry vocals and all kinds of fry vocals um, are the one thing that everyone wants to learn. And is, it's a very popular singing technique at the moment. Like um, through all the genres, I find that, especially in like the very modern um, metal styles that are coming uh, up and that are very popular at the moment. Um, the fry vocals is the one thing that everyone wants to learn. And yeah, <laughs> I get asked that a lot to teach fry vocals. <laughs> so people fry vocals, that's, that's the current trend. Okay, what's the biggest tip you can give the average metal screamer? Even if it's a professional or a beginner, is there a general rule that you're like, okay, this is one of the golden tips? Mm, probably not only for metal singers, but for every every kind of vocalist, I would say, look for what is unique in your voice and try to follow that um, instinct that you have. Like, I mean, first of all, there's only one you and everyone else is already taken. Um, so um, it's some... Some people are more drawn towards um, fry vocals as far as what is easy for them. So, some are drawn more to um, uh, false chord vocals just because it comes natural to them. And you can, of course, go through the effort and learn something that is really difficult because you're aiming for a certain sound or you learn how to accept your voice and go with it. Because like sooner or later, you will add more techniques and, and more sounds to your voice um, um, anyway, it's, I, I'm, I'm still learning. I mean, like I, I still figure out new sounds that I can make um, still and have a lot of fun with that. So like go for what comes natural for you, for yourself and roll with that. And just, um, yeah, don't stress about how other people sound, especially in metal. Um, I can't stress this enough. Like there's, there's room for all voices. Like it can be um, a voice that might sound very raw and you will find a song and a way to express yourself artistically with it. And then there are some people who have a lot of warmth in their growl and they will find a genre where they can um, be artistic with their voice. So like all, as I say, like all creatures are welcome in metal. So just like let them out. <laughs> cool. Awesome. I, I think that's... Uh one of the best closers I could wish for in an interview. This is so because I fully I fully agree with it. It's the same with with me as a guitar player. You see so many kids trying to copy exactly someone else's playing, and I think like okay, well you try to find your own unique voice as a guitar player. Mm -hmm. So even as especially as a vocalist, yeah, I uh, I I fully support that. Uh, yeah, that, that 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 I would say I fully support that train of thought. Yeah, fully agree with that. Okay, so is there anything you want to say to the people who are watching this? We're at the end. It's free now. It's up to you. <laughs> this is most, like it's the difficult part. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, people out there, um, I know like it's been difficult times at the moment, but the one thing that we have is we can work on our creative outlet and we have something that we can channel everything that we feel inside. And um, I'm really happy that we have that so make use of that and um, never give up pursuing your dreams ladies and gentlemen <laughs> cool it was great having you and see you next time thank okay? you so much see you bye <laughs>